afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for listening in today to our Health Aging at Olivia um, vlog. And I am talking today to Kirsty Wilson. Kirsty and I have had a few chats, and if you watch these uh, vlogs regularly, you'll already know a bit about Kirsty. She is an absolute oh, font of all knowledge when it comes to nutrition and health and fitness, and she specialises in women going through the menopause. So really, kind of women from the age of 40 plus, she does work with women of all ages, but she's so passionate about this area that, you know, she naturally attracts women, including myself, to follow her on social media and to, um, to listen to her advice, because she's really down to earth. As I say, she's very knowledgeable. I know it's such a huge area and um, there can be a lot of misleading things out there, a lot of confusion, but Kirsty just says it how it is, and that's why I love talking to her. I've learned so much personally just in these chats. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is we've kind of broken down, um, the menopause is such a huge area, we've broken down um, some of the kind of main areas that, that you get affected, if you like. And today we are going to talk a bit more about kind of stress and more about people's mental well-being going through it, which I know, again, probably Kirsty is a massive area and I know you um, coach people on, on group sessions and individually and, and yeah I know and I know just from my own friendship group and my own family people's um, um, kind of emotional well-being and through the menopause can vary greatly. Yeah absolutely I mean we've cho chose to kind of narrow down a bit into stress just now because it is a huge area and actually for a long long time you know, before menopause was such a kind of big, you know, I'm, I'm going to say PR, that's not the right word, before it was out there in the public, it's profile, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> first, see, this is the first mental symptom of menopause, you lose one as long <laughs> Listen, I know the feeling. <laughs> if I don't write it down, it's gone forever. So, um, you know, everybody would have known menopause, even men as your hot flush or your crazy woman, whatever, but we never really unless it was affecting you thought much more about it we hear about night sweats all those sort of things but actually the mental health issues with menopause are, just, are actually the kind of most threatening to quality of life and actually can have the hugest circumstance eh, hugest consequences on women's life so and that can be women just feeling that they're getting more irritable that things that didn't annoy them before annoy them now mood can be low now question you get asked a lot is well how do you know it's just not depression now with usually clinical depression um, a doctor will tell you patients would be in a low mood more or less continuously over a period of time whereas particularly through the perimenopause you can wake up in the morning and be high as a kite and happy with the world and by the afternoon you're crashing down mm. and what I would say to all women to monitor mood first of all is use something like Louise Newsom, the menopause doctor's app which is called Balance a brilliant app for your phone and you can record daily symptoms you don't need to type anything in they're all there for you and you're just pressing them so it's a job that takes seconds but it means that if you want to go to your GP and discuss this or actually you can diagnose yourself with perimenopause because if you're in your late 40s you're perimenopausal by definition so to monitor your mood even a mood diary of your own link it to also your menstrual cycle if you're still having periods but brain fog forgetting words um just generally being maybe not looking forward to things the way you used to and let's get into the details of stress so stress isn't good for anyone as a general population we know this it can increase your risk of all sorts of diseases apart from you know who wants to be running about the whole time feeling as though they have this tight chest, the adrenaline is super high. And my experience of women and myself is we can run about in this stress state a lot without even kind of taking a minute to be aware of it. Yeah. So we're running it becomes our kids. Almost natural. That's your natural default now. Oh yeah, kids, maybe parents looking after a home, working, running a business. We, you know, loads of us are familiar with all these things possibly at the pinnacle of your career at this stage in your life you know middle-aged women are the most growing part of the UK workforce now so this is not uncommon and it's lovely because us middle-aged women bring so many much experience and amazing things to the workplace so but that comes with its stresses 
So why is stress not so good for us, like worse than it is for, say, a 30-year-old man? And again, that's me just, you know, picking an example out there. But the reason it's so bad is all these symptoms that I've mentioned, the mood swings, irritability, the hot flushes, the palpitations, even your libido, all those things are worsened by stress. So as if it's not kind of bad enough for some women, we add stress in there and it's just a really bad situation for how you feel, but also the physical impacts on your body. So what do we do about it? Is the question, right? Mm -hmm. The dollar question. (laughs) And, you know, I think because I'm working with some businesses now as well, you're directly hearing how it's affecting women at work. Yeah. And works have to start recognising that, and that has to be part of the process as well. There's really things that sound they're so, so simple, but when we're running in that fight or flight mode, that's our sympathetic nervous system. That's the one that thinks that we're not safe. So see when you're running about, maybe dropping off the kids, picking up the shop and back in to make the dinner, back on your computer for work, doing all the things you're doing, your body thinks it's in danger. It doesn't know that you're not a cave woman getting chased by a lion, a tiger, or a bear. It really doesn't. So we have to let the body know it's safe. So how we do that is we need to switch into the other side of our nervous system, which is our rest and digest, our parasympathetic, where everything is a bit calmer. One of the quickest ways to do that is just to stop and breathe for three, four, five minutes. Now, the best kind of breathing we can do is through our nose, breathing in, say for four or five, but breathing out for longer. Yeah. So say breathe in for five, breathe out for seven. I think the, the, the example I put in my Instagram page the other day was in for four, hold for five, out for seven. Yeah, oh, yeah, I've heard that. Seven, yeah. out for eight. All these variations, important thing is you're breathing out longer than you're breathing in. Now, I've had this discussion with lots of ladies, oh, but I'm working, how am I going to do this X, Y, Z? You can go into the toilet and you're working, sit and do this. You do not. Well, it sounds to... insane. You can't. When you say, I'm too busy to stop and breathe. You're you're I'm too insane. busy to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, is everything, your work, those pressures, everything is so important that we can't actually say, well, I don't want high blood pressure. I don't want my symptoms to be worse. If there's one thing you can do for yourself is actually stop to breathe. I've got ladies that come to me and, yeah, I'm all for if you want to lose body fat, that's great, body autonomy all the way. But they come in and they're high as a kite and not in a good way. So actually getting up maybe 20 minutes early in the morning to have a cuppa and do five minutes breathing is going to do them more good at this point in time for their health and their eventual weight loss journey than any diet is going to do. So take that minute for yourself. And I've brought that up because it's one of the easiest ones to do. Other things are really excellent at bringing you into that slower side of your nervous system are yoga. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Yeah, yoga. Now, I'll sometimes just put on a 12-minute YouTube. Now, to be honest, it's only when I'm up really early. I, I get up early anyway, but it's when I get up really early that I manage to fit that, and I don't prioritise it. For me, it's easier to take a bit of time out for breathing. Yeah. When my kids are up a wee bit again, then... You know, I'm hoping that I schedule in yoga as a, you know, a standard part of my weekly routine. At this moment in time, I don't have another couple of hours to say go do it. Um, if I did feel hard, highly stressed out, I would maybe need to kind of change my priorities a little bit. But I do appreciate it's easier said than done. But even for some women, when the, the lighter nights are coming in, actually gardening. See if that's something you like. Now, I ain't ever going to do gardening, right? <laughs> <laughs> but... For for some some women, that is what actually has been shown even better than yoga in certain individuals for getting you into that lower heart rate, letting your body know it's safe. First, walking out in nature is one of the best ones ever. Appreciating what's around you. I've stopped taking my headphones when I go a walk now. And I love my music, I love my podcast, but it's just constantly keeping us in this doing, doing, doing. When actually, you just want some quiet right um other things that are good uh, are your meditation and even if you don't buy into it don't worry you don't need to an app called insight timer is one of them that's totally free and 
you can just play it. You don't need to engage in it. You will eventually. All you need to do is listen to it and go through a guided meditation as short as five minutes. And this sounds like, again, a lot of information. Pick one of these things and actually say, I'm going to put the time in my diary. And when you start doing these things, you're probably not going to manage it every day. But my phone beeps. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it beeps telling me to remember to breathe. <laughs> but no, honestly, I think that is so true. And I, I think even, and I think I read somewhere as well, even just the act of closing your eyes when you breathe, it shuts down something like 60% of the activity in your brain. Right. Just I mean, by actually closing your eyes and taking it, because you think we're, we're exposed to, as you say, like, not even without your headphones, just all the... Um, Senses, sensory yeah. stuff that's going on around about us that we don't even realise. Yeah, and you're actually, you actually, you know, you know, I should put this on as a post. If you're reading this, drop your shoulders. I know, you're right. I know. Like this. I know. I'm sitting like this. I know you're right. We go about like this, right? I know. And the thing is, like that's causing this like tension. But if you're going about like that, you're not in a relaxed state. And we need stress. Stress is good a lot of the time. We need stress to to new challenges, try new things go into interviews, do presentations, we need a little bit of adrenaline. But there's a cap with that sort of adrenaline, whereas when we're in this highly stressed state, it doesn't switch off. So, And I think as well, Kirsty, you know, just what you were saying there, I think, you know, I've really tried, like, during the day to even just get out, there's a park across the road from where I work, and just get out and even just go for a walk around there, just because I think before it was always like, right, I'll be just dead busy all day and dead stress, but then I'll come home and breathe and then I'll breathe and then I'll have a glass of wine or then I'll chill out. And I think what you're saying is so important because you need to slot, slot this in throughout the day. If you're yeah. going to, you know, maintain some kind of sense of not being stressed out your head all the time, you don't wait till you go home at night and you've been no. bombarded. You have to fit it in. I do absolutely appreciate that people will listen to this going, how am I going to manage that, Right. Or maybe thinking that sounds familiar and I never realised I was going through it. You know, I was a teacher before. You know, you hardly, you know, in my mind, had time to eat your lunch, right? Mm -hmm. However, employers are not going to get away from it. You know, it, um, I always want to say HRT policies, menopause policies are just becoming something that's standard. And if you're having problems, you need to go to your employer or HR and it will be a brave HR department these days that doesn't recognise that these things are an issue and they are going to have to let women literally breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Oh, no, listen, Kirsty, thank you so much again. Always so welcome. insightful. I'm very, very grateful for you taking the time to, to chat with us. And I'll say I'll put all your information below again and say anybody who's watching this is, yeah, going similar ages to myself, um, please go on and have a listen to Kirsty follow her on social media because honestly, she's a breath of fresh air. So thanks, thanks so much, Kirsty, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Peace. Bye. Cheers.